got big news from Japan where we can finally confirm for you that two of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have in fact suffered a meltdown or a partial meltdown. Here's how we found the news in a small quote in the Irish Times. The head of the Atomic Energy Society of Japan had said that the fuel rods in reactors 1 and 3 have melted and settled at the bottom of their containment vessels, confirming fears that the plant suffered a partial meltdown after last month's huge earthquake and tsunami. So there you have it, one month after the event, a confirmation of what many have feared, a meltdown or partial meltdown at two reactors. Then there's this problem in reactor number two, where they can't seem to get the water underneath the reactor pumped out. A large volume of highly radioactive water in the reactor buildings is hampering efforts to restore cooling functions at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In Unit 2, approximately 660 tons of tainted water was transferred from the tunnel to the condenser by Wednesday. After the transfer, the water level of the tunnel fell by 8 centimeter. But by 7 this morning, the water level was back to where it was on Tuesday before water was moved. This is a huge concern because what it could mean is that there is another leak at reactor number two. And if you remember that huge radioactive leak of water that really contaminated the ocean around Japan a week or so ago, it came from this reactor out of this very leak, out of this very tunnel. So if there is another leak, we could be experiencing another huge exposure to the wildlife in the ocean around Japan. Meanwhile, in the United States, elevated levels of iodine are being discovered in milk in particular along the west coast. We're told it's still safe for human consumption, but they are being found in milk in the west coast. So a lot happening at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant as they continue to battle a very serious nuclear disaster in Japan. Fukushima University has begun checking radiation levels in the atmosphere to get a better grasp of the extent of contamination from the troubled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The university on Friday released a balloon carrying equipment to monitor weather conditions and radiation levels into the skies above Fukushima City. <laughs> oh, no. It plans to gauge radiation levels and collect other data up to 30 kilometers above the Earth. Over the next 20 days, readings will be taken at intervals of every 10 meters. Since last month's nuclear accident, the university has been checking radiation levels at more than 300 locations in Fukushima Prefecture, but such measuring has been limited to areas on the ground. University Vice President Akira Watanabe is a member of the research team. He says the aerial survey will help provide a better understanding about how toxic particles are spreading in the atmosphere. <laughs> So what impact the nuclear accident will have and how much longer it will keep affecting the environment. Those are the things we have to gauge. We hope to come up with those estimates through this survey. The United States has lifted its voluntary evacuation advisory for families of government employees in Tokyo and other Japanese cities. The U.S. government issued the advisory after the accident of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The U.S. State Department said on Thursday the situation is dramatically different now than it was on March 16th when there were significant releases of radioactivity. It says the health and safety risks for areas including Tokyo are low and did not pose significant risks. But the department says it will maintain the recommendation to avoid travel within the 80-kilometer zone around the nuclear plant, saying the situation there remains serious. The Japanese automobile industry will begin checking vehicles prior to export in order to combat rumors of possible contamination with radioactive substances. The United States has already begun checking Japanese automobiles for radiation at several ports in the country following the nuclear accident in Fukushima. Japan's automakers say no radioactive substances have been detected in their tests. However, the Japan Automobile Manufacturers Association decided to take the measure to guarantee the safety of Japanese cars industry-wide. The association plans to select about 10 automobiles per shipment. 
and use special devices to check whether high, higher than normal levels, that is, of radiation are present. Officials say they will start testing their, uh, this month, that is, at major ports in Japan. The data will be disclosed to other countries if necessary. The operator of the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has agreed to make provisional damage payments to residents living around the plant. Now, this comes after the government ordered the company to make the payments on Friday. Based on the decision by the government, TEPCO has decided to pay provisional payment as a way to provide funds for immediate needs. By doing so, we hope to be of some help. We will pay the provisional payment to the residents who live in areas designated as evacuation zone and shelter in place zone following the nuclear power plant accident. Residents in areas within 30 kilometers of the plant who have been ordered to evacuate or stay indoors are eligible for the payments. A single residents will receive $9,000 each and larger families $12,000 each. Nearly 50,000 households are eligible to receive compensation. The total amount of cash payouts is expected to be roughly $600 million. TEPCO will start making payments as soon as they can, as soon as they can arrange the details.